projects we're doing this um, six week session is this French um, press maker. Um, so I got the guts of this at easypots.com. They're located in Seattle for anyone that wants to play along. Um, so this is kind of both a hand built and a thrown assignment. So the round part, we're not gonna throw just because it has to be so in round. Um, that I'm not sure we would all have success doing that. And then the lid, we're gonna throw, we're gonna put the round form on the wheel and do the base, and then we're gonna throw a spout and pull a handle. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to demo the larger of the um, French presses. So this comes in a medium size, a small size, and a large size. The French press guts do. Um, the small one I felt like was too small for anybody from the Pacific Northwest that likes coffee. Um, and But the first thing I'm going to need to do for the large template, because it's about 8.3 inches by 12.57 7, 12 inches, um, and that's considering 12.5 shrinkage rate, we're going to use B-Mix. Uh, so I need, obviously, a bigger piece of clay than this. So what I do to create that, and we want it to be about a little bit over a quarter of an inch because we're gonna texture it. So I will just use this to cut some slabs that are about the same width. We need one more. And I'll put this through the slab roller to get the quarter of an inch. Now we have our clay, I'm just going to set this chunk back here, and now I'm going to move these aside. So to join the um, slabs together, I'm just going to kind of mush the seams. This is taking a bit more than we need. That. You could, if you didn't have a slab roller at home, you could just roll this out with a rolling pin then. And um, a good poor man slab roller is to use these dowels in different widths um, and then just use a big pastry rolling pin. So, and you can get these dowels at Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay, so now I have my slab roll piece of clay. And I'm going to just, um, first I'm going to just kind of get rid of some of the excess clay because we have a lot of clay here. I'm just gonna put my template on there to where it matches up the best, and I'll just get rid of some of this. Just put it back on our block to use for something else. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is just get rid of all of the texture that the slab roller put on the clay. And you, I just use one of these soft ribs on um, my clay because I want to have texture showing up. Since we're doing a hand-built thing, might as well take advantage of that. So I'm using a mat that has kind of like a bamboo um, print. And I'm going to use this kind of tropical um, MKM roller. And then I'm going to get, roll this on. a little bit. Pushing out the clay. And then I'm just going to go over the top of this 
with my roller. So it's going to just create like a nice texture you want to on this part. Okay, so now I've got a texture and I'm going to take my template again. And I'm just going to kind of put it up there. And I'll roll it just to kind of get it on there so it's not moving. And then I'm just going to use an exacto knife and just cut along the lines. Move it a little. Okay, so now we've got this guy, and I'm just going to soften the top and the bottom for the lip, um, just because it tends to mean I don't have to do as much work. So just take an old t-shirt, you take a piece of plastic too, and I'll just turn it over on the other side, and smooth that. So now we need to miter the edges so that they'll fit together. Easy tool is to use this dirty gold rolls tool. It's a, it's a little bit tougher than some of the other manufacturers um, that I have bought for my studio. So um, I'm going to use the smallest side of it. So I just cut a bevel there and then I'm going to turn it over and cut the same exact bevel on the other side so that they'll match up. And then I'm going to get a tube and cover it with plastic. For this next part, I've got a tube. And this tube just happens to be the exact right size. I always, if there's carpet or anything that comes to my house, I always make sure that I cut it up and use it because you can always use it in the studio for something. So I'm just going to flip and score those two beveled edges that we did. tube to kind of guide it around. I'm just going to take it in the end and that'll make it easier to bring it out and I'm just going to bring these two. See how those two beveled edges kind of fit together? I'm just going to kind of mold them together a little bit overlapped. And a little lightly. cement it with a pony roller so in the end nobody can tell that you actually hand built this it was actually all thrown and then I will let it set up on this roller for a little bit till it's just a little bit under leather hard so we can put it on the wheel so now I'm going to throw the base of the French press and I just take a disc of clay and I just want to throw a disc that I can join the bottom to. And you can do this by hand if you wanted to, if you were a hand builder. I just find it's faster to do it and I like the results I get on the wheel. And I actually throw a pretty big disc because I want to have a foot. So it raises it off the ground a little bit. Okay. So then, I'm going to dry my hands off. Okay, so now 
I'm going to take my disc that I had made and I'm just going to put it on there. And I'll just kind of center it as best I can. That's pretty centered. So I'm just going to make a mark on the outside. And a mark on the inside. And then I'm going to actually just almost like tunnel that out. And that does two things. It creates the bottom plus it um, keeps everything in round, which you want for these French press. So I dug it down about a half an inch. And then I'm just going to take this and set it on there. It should just nest in there, which it does. So now I'm just going to take a paintbrush and kind of push, it's either a paintbrush or a sponge. I think I should use my finger though. And I'm just going to push that edge edge there and then I'm just going to take this on the outside and you can do any kind of bottom that you want to do at this point like if you want to have that little round bottom that people seem to like you could do that I'm just going to go straight down and have it be more of an, at an angle for how I want to finish this that's going to keep everything in round. And so now I just want to finish the edge on the bottom and the top. So I'm just going to take this and smooth it around in there. And if you need, if you feel like you need to touch the outside of this, get your pony roller and use it on the outside. I'm just going to finish the lip. And I may take a little bit off of my needle tool just so I get a perfect edge up at the top because there's a little bit of give on the template. soften that and I'm just going to undercut the bottom. So see how the top now and the bottom are round and the last thing I'll do is I'll throw the lid so that when they're drying the lid can kind of keep everything round at the top and the um, base is keeping everything round at the bottom. So now I'm just going to undercut this and then I'll trim a foot on it. a pound of clay and I threw just a shallow little bowl and I brought it out to the um, width of the outside of my French press because that'll be the outside let me just bring that just a little bit far and then if you see it's taller than I probably want it to be but I'm going to bring this part in to be the flange going to set inside. So now I'm just going to start bringing that in and make sure that it's the right dimension. And to kind of get that angle right, I usually use some sort of straight like a credit card or these 
these little things that you get at the hotel when you stay at it. And I'm just going to create an edge there. So it's more like a 90 degree angle now. And then I'll just check this, make sure it's going to fit inside my pot. Which it is, I could actually bring it out a little bit. So then I'm just going to undercut this and let them dry, and then um, I'll join it together. The last thing I need to throw is the spout. Okay, so I'm now I'm throwing the um, spout that goes on my French press, and it doesn't need to be very big, and it's really about like a bud base. So I centered a piece of clay, went down all the way to the bat, and now I'll use my littlest red rib because I kind of like it to have a real belly at the bottom. And I do this for my teapots too. I feel like it kind of helps things from dripping. I don't know if that's true or not, but, but my teapots don't drip using these kind of spouts. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit more. And, you know, if you're more comfortable hand building the spout, you could easily cut out a template and hand build something. And I guess the positive side of that would be that you could, um, you could add texture to it. Doesn't mean I can't add texture to this, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. So now I'm going to trim the foot on my French press and I want it to be fairly deep. So now I'm going to use a decorating disc so that I can divide my bottom of the pot by three because I want to have kind of like a tripod foot situation. So then I will go in with just uh, any kind of round object to make the feet and I'll just press it in and then um, on each one and then I will refine it with a sponge just to do any cleanup. I've got the lid for the pour over and um, I've got it on there. It fits pretty good. Um, I'm going to smooth it off with a rib, and then I've got this really thin slab of clay that I um, rolled out, and it's got the same pattern as it's on here, just to kind of match the two up. You don't have to do that. I just kind of liked it. I'm just going to smooth that off. And then I'm just going to drape this whole thing over here and cut it off because I want it to kind of look like it was purposeful that it was meant to go like that. So I'm going to just use a paintbrush, get some of my sticky water, and then I'll do that on this side too. So then I just took my X-Acto knife and ran it around the edge to cut off any excess clay. I created when I started this. And I want it to be up pretty high because this pretty much has to, the height of the spout is 
how high you can put liquid in it for your coffee. I'm going to put this across from where I created the seam so I can get it in the right place. just trace around it with my needle tool so I know where it needs to go. And I'll put a registration mark on it there, 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 and there, just kind of like you do. Um, if you're making a teapot. Just a mark right there so I know where to take the hole out. For this. So then I'm just going to pull a handle to be able to attach it to the French press um, and the handle needs to be pretty wide so that it's got the strength to hold all that liquid and it's got to be placed far enough away from the cylinder so that your hands don't get burnt. So then I will just slip and score the handle and I attach the larger or the wider part of the handle to the base of the cylinder and then I will wrap it around the edge to um, create the top part. So the last thing I have to do is put a hole in the top so that the pole of the French press guts will go through it. So I just use a screw and um, it's pretty much the right diameter for everything to fit. And then I just am going to let it dry. <laughs> 